Another year in the bags, another boatload of games in the record books. I'm Ghost Robo, and welcome to our first top list for 2014. Last year was definitely a weak one for gaming, possibly the worst in my memory, but there sure were some bright spots, and we will touch on those soon. Right now, though, we have to dig deep and dirty and find the ones that let us down. Please remember that these aren't games that I view as terrible, horrible, or bad. Maybe I even like them, but they left me with some sort of sour taste. And remember to keep it cordial and civilized in the comments. These are just opinions after all, and you're entitled to your own. You can feel any sort of way about these games, and that is perfectly A-OK -okay and valid. So let's keep things nice, hey? Sounds like a good idea, and let's kick this list off. I definitely will be getting to the stuff that I loved about 2014, but first my top five most disappointing games. We begin with one that I hate to put on this list because I did enjoy it, and that is Titanfall. Man, Titanfall, where did you go wrong? Was it the early beta? Was it a lack of content and unlocks for the multiplayer? Was it the complete omission of a true single player? Maybe it was just bad timing, but this Xbox One exclusive fell flat. I really liked it too, and it's always rubbed me the wrong way that this game disappeared from people's mindshare quite quickly because I thought it was fast, I thought it was fun, it brought in futuristic tech, it brought in wall running, titans, all sorts of stuff that it seemed first person shooter fans would love, but I think one thing that it really screwed up on was the balance with the minions. Now, you're achieving super high scores in Titanfall, but a lot of those are inflated because you're killing NPCs, and it seemed like getting a high score was just too easy. The Titan kill streak, if you want to call it that, occurred very frequently, and there was nothing really to gun for. No motivation to go 20 and 0, or 30 and 2, or 40 and 5. Instead, it was more about piling on as many kills as you could, getting that Titan to drop as fast as possible, and getting back in the action, even if you were gunned down yourself. I think that the maps might have been a little too big as well, and perhaps the lack of content rubbed people the wrong way. Heck, if you're going to get invested in a multiplayer, you definitely want there to be reasons for you to keep prestiging and keep continuing on. And Advanced Warfare just seemed to do everything a little bit better. Odd, given the pedigree of this Titanfall team, I kind of expected it to take over and revolutionize the shooter space, but alas, it only lasted for a little bit of time. I think they definitely can rebound with Titanfall 2, and I really enjoyed some of the stuff that was there in this first entry. The Titan on Titan combat is really fun, and I think that mode might be the shining star. They've definitely tried to support the game, adding in a wave-based co-op mode and some other things. But I also think that just the way that the matchmaking was handled with single player, the fact that it was basically just multiplayer matches with a little bit of uh, dialogue peppered in, I think that really rubbed people the wrong way and really sort of ruined what they were trying to achieve. Now, the baseline game, I think it controls really well. I think the guns feel well, but there's just not enough of it. And so Titanfall takes up spot number five. I'm sorry, buddy. I hope you can do better in your second attempt. Moving on to number four, we've got Watch Dogs, and this might be the number one game for a lot of people in terms of disappointments last year, but for me, I worried about it from the onset, and that's why it sits where it does. Watch Dogs was heralded to be the big next-gen game. It was the it thing for PlayStation 4 until it missed its initial launch and fell into mid-2014. When it did release, it was a lackluster mix of open-world storyline that kind of sucked and some cool single-player aspects. I think if this game would have gone linear, they would have found a lot more success and higher review scores. I like some of the hacking stuff. I like the idea of being this mastermind moving through the city, but Aiden wasn't a very likable character, and a lot of the things that they had him do in the game eh, kind of feel a little bit shady. I'm not sure you can really empathize the guy who screws people over on the regular and beats down anybody in his path. I don't think that the Chicago world was really fleshed out enough and it felt very samey as you moved around. There wasn't enough landmarks, there wasn't enough cool stuff to see and take in, and the multiplayer aspect of the game Ugh, that one was supposed to be a whole bunch of fun, and instead, I think it just frustrated people, whether it was guys coming into your game and chasing you around, or you getting tipped off that you were supposed to go find somebody that you can't find. Even the more open-ended multiplayer mode left a lot to be desired. So Watch Dogs, again, is a game like Titanfall that has potential to really improve upon itself. Ubisoft, though, makes me worry with the way that they're going, uh, and a lot of their franchises, annualizing them, making them just very standardized, and trying to pour as much stuff into one Titanfall package as they can to juice out as many gameplay hours as gamers can get. I think this one is definitely taking a year off, so perhaps it'll come back stronger in 2016 and deliver the true detective experience we really wanted because there are the baselines for a good game there. Heck, I even thought the DLC featuring the secondary character was some fun. It's got a decent shooting system, reminds me of Splinter Cell, and kind of takes advantage of that computer-esque tech aspect um, in some cool ways. They just need to double down on that, focus in on those kind of missions 
actions and remove all the extra stuff that's trying to be like Grand Theft Auto. Don't be GTA. Nothing can unseat that one. Instead, let's keep things original. Let's merge the Splinter Cell shooting system, some things that you've developed well through your other games, and make a truly cool Aiden-focused experience. Heck, I'd be fine dumping Aiden and getting another character. I thought the other characters in the game were kind of interesting, although none were truly just that memorable. I don't think this is a bad game. I think it's a pretty solid title, but it definitely fell way short of what it could have been and what they were promising. It brings into light the danger of pre-orders. When you see all these flashbang whiz womb trailers, you might want to go drop your money, but is that the best idea? Maybe you should wait for the release. Maybe you should wait to see if there's a delay. Maybe you should wait and see what the game really is. Watch Dogs, you sit there sadly at number four. Now, number three gets a little bit weird because it's not one specific title, but rather the entire group of missing games that got delayed. Whether it was Batman Arkham Knight, The Witcher 3, Evolve, or The Order, we missed out on a lot of potentially top tier titles due to development issues and fear of clutter. Well, we were left with a fall that was kind of empty. Games like Shadow of Mordor climbed the Game of the Year ranks, and we missed out on what could have been true gems. I think all four of those games have the potential to be really cool. Stuff like Batman Arkham Knight, though, got delayed all the way into June. Again, this brings into question the pre-order issue, where you're promised a date and it never seems to hit. In fact, it could be delayed multiple times like The Witcher 3. Some of these games definitely will strengthen their ability to succeed. Evolve finds a much better home in February, and perhaps The Order does as well, but I wish these would have come out in the calendar of 2014 because they could have been my favorite game. Instead, we were left with a kind of empty fall season, and we wait until 15 for their full reveals. We enter the part of the list that gets kind of nasty because these are now the games that I was super hyped for and left in tears. Number two is Assassin's Creed Unity. Ugh. I saw this game day three and I thought it would hands down be my game of the year. It looked beautiful in person. They've improved the play control. The open world of Paris was gorgeous and gigantic and they were taking advantage of their next gen exclusive. Instead, we were left with a game that just fell apart with bugs and bad controls, standardized gameplay, and a subpar story. Assassin's Creed Unity, Arno, why couldn't you deliver? I was really hoping for this to be the resurgence of AC and really get it back to the glory days of Assassin's Creed 2 where we were introduced to Ezio. Instead, I'm not a big fan of Arno, and I think the coolest part of the game is probably the co-op. Not because it's a serious assassin adventure, but because it's goofy fun and allows you to mess around with your best friends or brothers. We're at a point where they're just iterating year after year on Assassin's Creed, and I think instead we need some big changes. Do you really want to play the same game in a different setting? Well, a lot of people do because it still sells super well, but maybe this is the bone that breaks the camel's back. It was broken to a large extent. People couldn't even play at launch. You got faces melting off, people falling through the floors, and definite lag in both versions of this one. Another thing that bugged me was the near total omission of the modern day. Give me Desmond or a different character investing the mystery of the modern world. Instead, we're left with a couple of short cutscenes and the merging of a couple of weird timelines. I don't know, they improve the flow of missions, they definitely streamline some of the stuff, but the introduction of all these microtransactions, chests that I can't open in-game because I haven't played a stupid app, that's just frustrating. And I think we gotta find a way to fix the controls here. I still feel like I'm urging my assassin to go where I want him to rather than having complete control. He's bumping into stuff. Maybe he goes up, maybe he goes down. Definitely the up climb and the down climb buttons were a help, but it's not where it needs to be for the ninth or 10th iteration of a franchise. I'm sure we'll get a yearly Assassin's Creed till the end of time, but I super hope they find a way to fix this series. It's a juggernaut among the industry, so there's not a whole lot of reason for them to do that, but hey, it would be really nice if we could get back to the glory days of Assassin's Creed 2. We've got victory coming this year. It's set in England. Could this be the one? I highly doubt it, but I'll remain hopeful. Assassin's Creed Unity, you're stuck at number two. Oh boy, we're at the big one, and I'm sure a lot of you can guess where this is going. My most disappointing game of 2015 is Destiny. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Destiny is a pretty cool and pretty good game. I phrase it as the best worst game I've ever played because there's so much potential and so much done well. It controls like a charm, it plays beautifully, it's even got some cool aesthetics, and I like the way that the community has come together. My big problem with Destiny is everything else. There's a letdown around every single corner, and it seems like they just didn't get it right. Whether that was their intention or not, I don't know, but what we have in front of us is a game that feels like it was chopped and screwed in so many ways that it's left half-baked. Why aren't the story missions more diverse? Why isn't there more than one area to explore in each world? Why don't the planets 
feel any different? These are the questions that I ask myself every time I play Destiny. Sure, the shooting is spot on, but when you've got a loot system as random as this, when the strikes are as boring and bullet sponge heavy as this, when the difference between missions and objectives is as boneheaded as this, you feel like you're just running through a rat maze and doing exactly what they want to do, which is make Bungie and Activision a whole bunch of money. Now, I know there's an allure to getting the best gear, leveling up your weapons, and taking your character straight to the top, but if you dig deeper and look at the underlying systems, they're confusing and convoluted for a reason, to keep you hooked on a limited amount of content. That loot system drives me insane. Why aren't you rewarded for being the best? The random nature of it increases the hours of this title so hugely, and it bugs the heck out of me. I don't want to grind for 150 hours just to get the weapon I was seeking out, and heck, I may never ever get it. I was also bummed that the characters didn't have more abilities. I think if you're going to position yourself as an MMO shooter type game, you need to give each character more than one special thing to do at a time. Sure, they're pretty cool. It's fun to be a warlock. I like being uh, the hunter, but after you do that move a million times, like, what gives? I wanted to do something else. And sure, you can switch subclasses, and there's the rumor of more subclasses arriving soon, but that still is going to limit you to one ability at a time. There's a very small set of weapon types and a very small set of gear variety. I know that there's definitely some that get in there and get a little bit crazy, but I wish there were sets that differentiated me from my friends a whole lot more. I'm also bothered that this game has one of the worst final boss fights I've ever seen. The fact that the story could be so cool and is instead stuck in a bunch of item descriptions on a website and that the cooperative multiplayer isn't limited by level. I can't tell you how annoying it was to be level 10, have a level 23 drop in, wipe the mini boss in front of me, and I didn't do a dang thing. There should be a way to turn that off, limit it something, I don't know. But with Destiny requiring an internet connection, you can't cut yourself off from these other hunters, warlocks, and titans. Now let's backpedal a bit and talk about what I do like, which is again, the shooting feels great. I love the idea of this game. I love what it could be, and I think a lot of people are playing because of what they hope it will be. I don't know that any DLC will rectify what has been done here, but the fact is, it's definitely not what we were expecting. It's definitely not what they promised, and it's definitely my most disappointing game of 2014. It sucks, because this is the one I was really counting on. This was a game that I thought could grab me. I've never been a 100-hour player, but I had hopes that Bungie's Leia's would be that game for me. Instead, I played it for a while. I definitely liked some of it, and I don't think it's bad. I really think it's, like I said, the worst best game I've ever played, the best worst game I've ever played. However you want to phrase it, Destiny does a lot right and a whole lot more wrong. I'm hoping that they're able to find a way to build this game into what it was meant to be and be brilliant with Destiny 2. I don't know their trajectory or their plan for future DLC expansions or how they plan to roll over characters into the sequel, but there's got to be a way to expand on what's been created here. Imagine if Earth housed Africa and New York and Old Russia. Now we're talking. Imagine if the moon had a different feel to it, a lower gravity or something like that. Now we're talking. Imagine if the strikes and the bosses were a little bit less than just sponges for uh, all your bullets. Now we're talking. Imagine if the raid wasn't limited to just groups of friends. I don't even have that many friends that play Destiny, so I'm totally screwed and can't even experience one of the best parts of the game. I know a lot of the content is backloaded and the end game is supposedly where it's at, but why should I have to play your game for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hours in order to uncover the goal? Give me some of that up front and show me what you got. I think these story missions and set pieces were lackluster, especially considering where Bungie has been with Halo and some of those scarab scenes blew me away years ago. Why didn't we get anything like that in Destiny. Again, they've got a great framework for a fantastic game. The foundation is laid. I like the world. I love the controls. The mechanics are spot on, but you gotta deliver and you gotta give me more. I think everyone can agree that the single player kind of stinks and while it's fun with friends to grind away, that's just not the kind of tea I want to be sipping every single day. So Destiny, oh, I'm so sorry. I wish I loved you and I could love you in the future, if things get changed with a sequel, that's the theme of the day. A lot of games here, they could improve dramatically and in fact be on my most surprising list or even my game of the year list in the upcoming future. But as of right now, that's my top five most disappointing games of 2014. What do you guys think? Let me know your most disappointing games of the year in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Remember, again, these are just opinions. They're not truths. I'm not telling you how to feel about these games. You can love them, hate them, do anything in between. I don't really care. And remember, there will also 
be a lot of lists that focus on the fantastic. Those are coming your way soon, so stay tuned. Till that time, guys girls, thanks so much for being an awesome audience and supporting me all throughout the year. I look forward to an epic 2015. Let's drink some hot chocolate. Until next time, we will see you all later.